So this video is about uh, graphing logarithmic functions, and it should be um, it shouldn't be too greatly different from uh, other things we've talked about this semester. But we're going to pull up Desmos as well and uh, take a look at it. So uh, I don't think we can talk about graphing log logarithmic functions without talking about graphing um, functions like, uh, or exponential functions, like y equals b to the x. So uh, y equals b to the x would be something like this. And it's somewhat dependent on the value for b. But there are things that are going to be true all of the time. Now, for instance, that's always going to be at y equals 1, unless we've applied some sort of transformation. But for a function that is just, for instance, f of x equals 3 to the x, or f of x is equal to 17 to the x, that is always going to be at y equals 1, and this is why. This is at x equals 0. So if my function at 0 is equal to some base, I don't care if it's 3 or 17, and x is equal to 0, well, b to the 0, I don't even care what b is, is always going to be 1. So when x equals 0, here, when x equals 0, when that equals 0, I get 3 to the 0, or I get 17 to the 0, which is equal to 1. So it doesn't matter the base of the function, again, unless we transform it, shift right, shift left, shift up, down, uh, you know, so vertical shift, horizontal shift, or if we have a multiplier that it, that stretches it in any fashion. Those are all transformations. Barring transformations, there, this exponential function is always going to cross the y-axis at y equals 1. Additionally, it will always have an asymptote at y equals 0, or in other words, it's always going to have uh, the x-axis as an asymptote. It's ever going to get closer as you move left or towards negative infinity. It's going to get ever closer to the x-axis but never get there. So it's always going to have those two things for certain. Then there's a third point, and I kind of think of these as anchor ideas, or some, or the points specifically as anchor points. Uh, the other one is going to be at f of x of the function when x is equal to 1. Or in other words, if I go and erase all this stuff and clean this up a bit, if I had a function f of x is equal to uh, 17 uh, to the x, if x was equal to 1 at x equals 1, I get the function that looks like this. But what's 17 to the 1? 17. Now, thinking of a different function, if I had, uh, let's erase a little bit. So let's say I had uh, g of x, and it's, it's uh, the power function or exponential function here was uh, 6 to the x. At x equals 1, um, g of x is equal to 6, because it would be 6 to the 1, which is 6. So note, at x equals 1, again, barring any transformations, the parent function is going to have uh, have a height uh, equal to its base, a height equal to its base. So even though I've written f of x equals b to the x, if we look at this height, uh, I think I could zoom in too. So I'm going to pick a, I can't pick a dark color. Let's pick white. Let's zoom in there. At x equals 1, I'm right here. And, you know, it's not super accurate, but that looks like it's at like 1.5. So then my function really is f of x equals 1.5 to the x. So these three things are true. I think of them, again, as anchor points. Uh, to summarize, uh, the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. Yeah, my, uh, there. Well, it's poorly written, but x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. And uh, when x is equal to 0, 
y is equal to 1 is on the graph, or it's part of the function. And 1, b is on the graph, or part of the function. So in other words, when x is equal to 1, y is equal to the length, of the, or it's, uh, equal to the height of the base, or y is equal to b. So that's this one, okay? Always going to be true, again, unless we transform. So now, what are transformations on that? Uh, transformation like um, f of x equals, uh, let's use a real number, 11 to the x plus 3. So you should recognize that that's a vertical translation. f of x equals 11, that's a poorly written 11 again, uh, x plus 2, that's going to be a horizontal transformation, okay? So barring transformations, these three, these three ideas are always going to be true. Now, this is, a, this is supposed to be a, a video about um, logarithms. Logarithms. So let's get to that. Uh, let me see if I can erase all this stuff. I think that'll be the easier way to go. So I'm going to erase all of this stuff and just talk about the relationship that this function has with uh, the logarithmic function or logarithmic functions. So first of all, uh, logarithmic functions are the inverse of exponential functions. So in other words, if this was in fact f of x, uh, I guess we'll stick with yellow. If this, in fact, was f of x equals 1.5 to the x, its inverse would be uh, g of x is equal to the log base 1.5 of x. And all, I guess this is poorly, poorly drawn because I can't put this 45 degree angle in here without crossing. I'm going to redraw this yellow part just so it's easier to visualize. It doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just uh, I'm trying to adjust this so it's easier to visualize. I'm going to be tighter and... and shoot up a little faster. That looks more like 2, so we're going to change the base to 2. I'm just changing the, our, our discussion here a little bit. And then I have to do this and change the color, go to two, okay? So now the inverse is going to be this. Not that, can't pause. I just wanted to get those targets so they would look better, okay? So it's because the function is a reflection about this axis And that axis is y equals x. So it's a reflection. This reflected about that. And it's not greatly drawn because this gap is, a little sh uh, is less distance than this one. But you get, hopefully you get the idea. And what happens is, is it changes a number of these properties. Instead of the x-axis being an asymptote, the y-axis is now an asymptote. It is asymptote. That's an M-P-T-O-T. And now my anchor points are, instead of 0, 1, it's now 1, comma, 0. Because if I put 1 into this logarithm, it will end up being 0. And if I put 2 into this value, I will get 1. And so those are now the anchor points. Or actually, this one can be written as um, b, comma, 1. Okay, if I put the base in, so if it's a log base 10, if I put 10 in, it will be 1. Uh, so yeah, I, guess that's where, I guess that's really where we're at. So that, those are kind of the basics. Those are anchor points, and that's how you can find uh, a way to graph all of these functions. Okay, so uh, I decided to continue this. So even though I, my language was cut it off, I'm going to attack this on the end. Um, here we have this uh, exponential function, and I put a base b. And again, to emphasize, if I, right now the base is set at 2. 
And I can't write on this, so you can't see, so I can only talk about it. If you look over here in the column where there's that red squiggle, and then there's an arrow beneath, that B equals 2 is a slider. It goes from negative 10 to 10, and I didn't set it up as integers, so I'm going to have to fiddle with this a little bit. But um, right now, it's set at the base is equal to, like our example that I had in the, the written example. And notice that, um, yeah, I don't think it allows me to, no. Uh, it doesn't let me have an arrow or anything. So anyway, uh, notice that x equals 1, y is equal to 2. Uh, right up here. Oh, I can do that. So as at x equals 1, y is equal to 2. Okay, and at x equals 0, y is equal to 1. Come on, get it on there. Pow, very close. Okay, there we go. And then I can never get closer. Notice how it's 0 0.005, and now it's 0 0.003, but I'll never get to the x-axis, y equals 0, because the x-axis is an asymptote. Now, if I take this slider and I move it up to 3, notice that um, this point is still at... 0, 1, but this continues to get lower, probably faster. But then um, this anchor point is at 1, 3 instead of 1, 2. So like I said, it's going to be 1, b, whatever your base is. If I make this 10, pow, it's all the way up here at 10, OK? It's allowing me to select it. Okay, there. So it's all the way up here at, at 1, 10. Okay? Now, in the same manner, I'm going to drag this over to 2 for comparison purposes. I'm going to turn this function on, which is your logarithm function. And note again that it is a reflection about th this function, y equals x. Um, I don't know how to hit enter. Oh, here. And so I want my, there we go. I wanted that to go away. The keyboard, that is. I don't want it to go away again. Come on, go away. Go away. Please. Okay. So um, this orange, this orange graph is the function y equals x. Uh, and so green is the reflection of red about that orange uh, line of reflection or line of symmetry. Not really because it's not the same object. But anyway, and this green function is, I don't it's not letting me select it. There we go. That green function is your logarithmic function. And so notice, like I had said, there's this anchor point at 1 comma 0. And because the base is 2, we also have this guy out here, which is 2 comma 1, or in other words, b comma 1. And if I take its slider and push it to 3, it flattens out some until this one is at b. This value is at b comma 1 or 3 comma 1. But notice that it's still an asymptote and it still goes through that point. It'll always go, that, go through that point, of course, again, like unless I translate or transform, I should say. So we're going to do that now. I'm going to go inside the function. I'm going to transform this logarithm. First, I'm going to do what, uh, what I think most of you think of as uh, something fairly easy to do. I'm going to subtract 2 from y. And it this would be the same as adding 2 to the logarithm. And I think that's what you guys think mostly as the uh, most intuitive thing. Oops, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to be back over here, and uh, we. Th I think most of us, most of you, think of it as that adding added. And so, if I have the same function, but then I add two to every single value after I've done the function, I'm effectively raising that green up two units. Maybe I should do this. Leave this as an anchor function, so it's always there. And actually, add a new function. Let's get rid of this guy. Let's put this one in. Mm -hmm. No, it's going to let me do that. I thought it was going to copy. So uh, what was that? Y equals, I want to put multipliers in here now. So I'm going to put uh, 
I already used A and B, so let's go C. Logarithm. Where's it at here? I'm going to go base A. And this is going to be X. Minus. Minus. We'll use that same convention as we did with parabolas. Uh, I want to close parentheses. And then I want to add K. Again, same uh, convention as we were using before. Not that I necessarily like it, but there we go. Okay. <clears throat> so, uh, let's see. What do we got? Okay, so let's make C equal to 1. H is equal to 0. Because H equaling 0 will replicate the green function. So my purple function will be the same as the green. And then let's make K equal to 0 as well. And notice how the purple one's laying right on top of the green one. So the example I was trying to pull out before was let's add 2 to every value. So that's basically taking this green function, executing it, but every single time a value comes out, I'm going to add 2 to it. So that should take my function and lift it or raise it or uh, shift it up 2 units. So I'm going to take K and shift it up and, add, and change that to 2. And notice that my purple guy, this guy, is raised up 2 units compared to that green guy. Okay. So then, what do we think happens with h? h is that horizontal shift, and it works the same way for every function. If h is positive, it's going to shift it to the right. And if it's negative, it's going to shift it to the left. Remember, some of you think of it as being counterintuitive because it actually looks like x minus h. So if it's negative, it goes to the right. If it's positive, it goes to the left. But remember, I, want you, I think it's easier or better for us to think as, the, as that minus sign is part of the function so I can look at h, and that becomes more intuitive. When h is positive, it's a shift to the right. When h is negative, it's a shift to the left. And so the transformations work exactly the same. So that's how we can sort through all this stuff if we remember what the parent function looks like, which is that green one where the, the, it has those two anchor points, and then it has that, uh, the y axis as an asymptote. So I think that is a good way to think of all this. So I, Desmos adding onto the video might have been, uh, I think, uh, helpful. I don't know. You let me know.